I'm a Seattle area lean agile scrum software consultant. <coughs> I've been in the Seattle area only about three years. Um, I was on contract at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation running an agile team there. And then I'm currently on contract at Microsoft, Microsoft on their faster project. But I get to talk to you about something even more exciting than that, um, Wikispeed. There's a bunch more information on wikispeed.com. But Wikispeed is a experiment that's been phenomenally successful so far. It's taking Agile, Lean, and Scrum as most of us use on our day jobs for software projects here in Seattle and applying it to rapid prototyping and manufacturing. And that experiment started in 2006, and it's done some really great things really quickly. <coughs> and we get to talk all about that. But although the example I have here is Wikispeed and what we've done primarily in the automotive space, what I'd really like you guys to be thinking about is what other problems this can be solving quickly. We're all, uh, probably every single person in this room is pretty savvy when it comes to Agile, Lean, Scrum, XP, Kanban, or, or Lean Principles, or any one of the above. And what we'll get to talk about a little bit is how potent those principles are when applied to traditional problems outside of software, and how what which of those principles Wikispeed has found that ported well, and which didn't, so we can focus on the ones that worked really well and really fast. So first, Wiki Wiki is Hawaiian for quickly. So Wikipedia was originally Fastpedia. It's become associated with distributed collaborative work, which is exactly what Wikispeed's all about. Uh, so we're actually <laughs> Speed Speed, which makes sense given what we were doing in the automotive space. So this is a map of entrance in the Progressive Insurance Automotive X Prize. This map was current as of October 2009, and it shows Wikispeed here in Denver, Colorado. That was my garage then, um, and I was a team of one at that moment. It grew pretty fast. 136 cars entered the Progressive Insurance Automotive X Prize from all over the world. Uh, you can see a few flags across the bottom. And the challenge that the X Prize put forward was it, for the automotive space was 100 mile per gallon cars. Now, there had been ultra efficient <coughs> concepts before, and there had been ultra efficient test vehicles before. A vehicle has never been built to road legal spec that achieved over 100 miles per gallon <coughs> on the same cycle EPA uses to give you a city and highway uh, fuel economy score, that window sticker on the side of a new car. That had never happened. There had been little torpedo shaped vehicles with two or three wheels where someone would lay down and it would go 25 miles an hour, fire the engine five times, coast down to five miles an hour, <laughs> fire the engine five more times, get back up to 25, and do this in a temperature controlled velodrome. velodrome. And they did get more than 100 miles per gallon. <laughs> the X Prize said, hey, let's change the world. Let's shake things up. Let's put a $10 million prize to incentivize innovation to solve this problem. They thought the energy crisis was something they wanted to take very seriously. Progressive Insurance stepped up as the title sponsor, funded the $10 million prize purse, and said if a group of people, a team, a company, one person, can build a car to road legal spec, so able to be sold and used on the road now, that would achieve more than 100 miles per gallon city and highway, they'd get $10 million. Now that car would have to seat four adults, it would have to have four wheels and at least a 200 mile range. But they did miles per gallon or equivalent, so electric vehicles were eligible as well using a wells to wheels conversion factor that they calculated. You had to use theirs. And uh, well, there was Wikispeed. Wikispeed grew phenomenally quickly and became a finalist. These green laurels on the logo here were when we became a finalist, when we passed all technical deliverables and went to the final stages in, uh, the finals occurred in Michigan, at Michigan International Speedway. The state of Michigan decided they wanted to fund New Thought Automotive and be associated with green high tech and uh, made facilities available there. Now, by this time, uh, I had become registered automotive manufacturer, which was a heap of paperwork. So we were able to create cars for legal sale. And in prototype, had two chassis that were getting over 70 miles per gallon and decided to post almost all that information as much as practical and not really hold anything back to the web. And I had a blog 
and that attracted all types of interest from around the world. People started coming to see what was going on in my garage at that time in Denver, Colorado. Became very excited about what they saw because it was starting to work. And then some of those people started to stay and volunteer. By the time we went to Michigan, we had 42 volunteers in four countries. Here's us with our test car at Michigan International Speedway. <coughs> this gentleman here is Al Unser Jr., two-time Indianapolis 500 winner. It was an honor to meet him and shake his hand. He was the hired gun for a team competing against us. <laughs> <laughs> he loved what we were doing and uh, actually spent a fair amount of time with our team. Uh, said it would be an honor to uh, to come have a picture with us, and that blew me away. And that's because he saw the way our collaborative team was working in the pits. He saw how quickly we solved all the different problems we were presented with at the Speedway. And he said, if I had a race team like that, I would have won Indy way more than two times. <laughs> we were flattered because, well, Al knows racing. This car has the aerodynamic profile we care about, but challenged aesthetics. <laughs> <laughs> It's a orange shoebox, but it has a NACA airfoil on the front. NACA is the predecessor to NASA. Uh, this is an aerodynamically carefully calculated airfoil on the front, in the rear as well, although at this angle it looks perfectly squared off, it's not. The front and the rear are almost mirrors of each other. Um, ultimately, we tied for 10th place in the mainstream class. We posted 114 miles per gallon on the EPA highway cycle in simulation of those cycles. Only in, on the dyno rollers in Argon Labs or temperature controlled dyno rollers do you actually get the window sticker that says 114 miles per gallon highway. And 114 miles per gallon city in simulation of the EPA city cycle there, uh, UDDS driving cycle. That was phenomenal. It wasn't enough to take home the $10 million. There were nine cars still on the track when we went home. But there's a lot of good that happened. <laughs> Here's what our car looked like at the X Prize underneath the body. And this is part of why Al was so excited. And this is part of why we've done a lot more since the X Prize that I'll get to in a minute. Our car is modular, like <coughs> software. So just like when you're designing web services, you do contract first development, and you say, here's how these things are going to talk to each other. Or you define an interface for your classes before you even stub out your classes. We did that with our car. It ended up allowing us to iterate very quickly on the car. So here you'll see our front crust structures. This was probably version three of that front crust structure. It's attached by four bolts in very specific locations that bear the brunt, uh, that are calculated to take the load of any frontal impact um, and all the federally mandated motor fuel vehicle safety specification impact scenarios. We're able to switch that without re-engineering the chassis. So when we, when we make an advantage in our chassis, we don't have to develop new crust structures. When we make an advance in our crust structures, we don't have to make a new chassis. The suspension corners are two foot by two foot plates of aluminum. Every part of the suspension attaches to that. So that plate is our interface. It has eight structural lugs, just like the tires held on with five structural lugs, and that bears all the load of one quarter of the car. We use eight of them on that suspension module. That means Anything attached to that suspension <coughs> corner is fair game for the car. We do that at all four corners. The engine module is a hot swappable module. It's an aluminum cradle using six structural bolts and a network cable, an RJ45 jack. <laughs> all the car cares about is that whatever's back there responds to an accelerator input, which is standardized over that network cable, and sends a fuel level back. That fuel level could be battery charge, it could be leveled liquid fuel left. It's not really particular past that. That allowed us to be testing one engine on a test bench and have the other one out in the car for testing and switch that engine while it was running in less than 10 minutes. That had never been done in a production intent vehicle. And again, this vehicle was built to meet all FMVSS. Without the body on, it's actually still road legal, which is kind of neat because we did impact testing directly on the chassis. The interior module is also a hot swappable module. It's swappable from two to four seats, and then we had several configurations we'd test through. Now this vehicle, as it sits, is the lightest chassis ever 
to get a five-star crash equivalency in simulation of all impact tests for road legal use. So front, side impact, offset front, roof crush, rollover, rear impact. And we get to talk a little bit more about how that works so light in just a second. But what's really important to note here is we made a fully modular hot swappable car just like you would if you were doing software. <coughs> Here's our chassis. So we were in the four seat class and there shows four adults sitting in the chassis and it's this very simple geometric shape. Those are aluminum extrusions, the same type of aluminum extrusions um, Jaguar, Aston Martin, and Lotus use. And here we have finite element analysis showing where stress starts to deform the body once peak loading occurs past tail point. Um, in a frontal impact scenario, we actually don't have any penetration into the cabin. And we get to show a little bit more about why on this slide. So this is finite element analysis of the side impact on our chassis. This is the shape and size of the side impact deformable barrier mandated by the federal government. This is put on a 5,500 pound rolling sled <coughs> and towed into the side of the car at 35 miles an hour. So this test is simulating a medium sized pickup truck with some load in it, T-boning your car at 35 miles an hour. What they look for is penetration into the cabin and then the pulse, the speed of the energy pulse. Is it enough to be tearing organs, even if something's not actually puncturing? If we were to spin this image this way, you'd see this entire face is red. Red in this diagram means peak stress, so maximum stress on a, on a variable scale. But from this side, we see something a lot more interesting. Again, red is peak stress. There is peak stress on the entire opposite side of the frame, the full opposite. We communicate load through this simple geometric structure through the entire chassis. Now, um, Honda's advanced compatibility engineering body architecture does a, does a version of this, where it has these structural tubes going from the front bumper up to the rear bumper. So when you're hitting the front or offset front, Part of the rear of the car takes that load too. That's fantastic and it allows smaller and lighter cars to achieve higher safety rating. We do that on the entire car. That's not true on just the side impact, but also frontal, offset frontal, roof crush and rollover. So we have hard points mapped to where our roll, bus, roll bars, A and C pillars, press into the car. The car essentially works like an I-beam where you have these thick structural flanges and a thin web connecting them. So until the fail strength of that aluminum tube, it's like, as far as that truck T-boning the car on the side is concerned, it's hitting a solid block of aluminum, but far, far lighter. This is why we have the lightest structure ever to achieve the safety ratings and simulation that it has. And this was all possible because we were able to iterate so quickly. It was all a module. <coughs> so we decided after, this, after our relative success of the XPRIZE coming in ahead of more than 100 other teams including <coughs> some very well-funded big names like we outlasted Tesla Motors and MIT's team that was well capitalized that we wanted to productize our vehicle and make it available to the public. We wanted our technology to be accessible. Um, we also wanted to <coughs> productize our fuel economy technology for separate sale to help other internal combustion engines, cars that were already on the road. And we also started a <coughs> consulting arm where we were talking about what we did with Lean, Agile, and Scrum in composites work, which is what this and the next slide are about. So we see in the machine a new buck of the car, something that we thought would be more pretty, but had the same aerodynamic profile we cared about. We laid it up in structural carbon fiber. This would normally cost $36,000 per body minimum. One of my friends that I went to composites to composite school with, Mark Zagata, I said during the XPRIZE, Mark, would you please do our aer aero shell for us? He does prototypes for Indy cars, Indy racing. If some of you guys are, or gals are car buffs, the Delta Wing was a product he made and that uh, received a fair amount of press. And he said, I'd love to, I love your project. I'll charge you only $36,000. I won't charge you for any of my time, just materials and the machining that I have to outsource. That was the lowest quote we received. By the time we finished the XPRIZE, using Agile Lean and Scrum, 
we had iterated a method where we, we, were, we were able to go from CAD to structural carbon fiber in three days. We were able to do it for less than $1,000 per body. If anyone else is doing anything like this, they're not talking about it. As far as I know, we're wholly unique. Then we went to the largest auto show in the world. Now, bear in mind, we are now a uh, team quickly increasing in volunteer count. We're now 52 <coughs> volunteers in six countries. And we think, all right, we're going to throw our card in the hat with the biggest contenders there are. The North American International Auto Show Organizing Committee says, we're really excited about what we're doing, what you're doing. We're going to put you on the main floor between Ford and Chevy. <laughs> We didn't know how it was going to go, but we were excited. <laughs> the show was packed. It was the largest attendance in recent years. I'm not sure, but I believe it may have been the largest attendance ever. There were three quarters of a million people coursing through the hall. There were 5,000 members of the press representing more than 60 countries. And they all stopped by our booth. <laughs> Luckily, we had a really, really slick boot. So this is our XPRIZE Mechanicals, still posting over 100 miles per gallon city and highway in simulation, with a new structural carbon fiber body that looks a little more slick. And we got to announce that we are now taking orders, that we were selling the car for delivery next January is when we anticipated the first customer car would leave the prototyping line. And we got to say that it wasn't very expensive, that it was $28,886. The press flipped out. <laughs> we had press that the next morning I woke up and we were in the New York Times online and Forbes Billionaire Club had linked to us. We had press in Japanese, German, Russian, Estonian, Hungarian, and others within 10 hours. Right after our press conference ended, a Japanese reporter ran up and said, Twitter is blowing up about you. I don't know what you're doing. Would you please tell me? Because he missed the press conference. <laughs> and in fact, I need to double validate this, but in early counts, uh, the largest announcement of the North American International Auto Show is the North American International Car and Truck of the Year. They do that on day one of the show to kick off the media. It looks like we had more press than that announcement. And this is part of why we had a beautiful car with the same aerodynamic profile we cared about. It was penned by Robert Moorbacher of Moore Composites, another volunteer. He's in Germantown, Maryland. I met him for the very first time after the press conference. We had already built